Links. Results by excellence. Results by excellence. Father, intervene. Intervene and do your best while the enemy tries to do his worst. And we know that you are the God of all possibilities, O oh God. And Father, this morning we ask you for definite results that will silence the enemy, O oh God. As we continue in the excellency that you are, my God. In Jesus' mighty name. Results by excellence. Are we typing? Are we typing Facebook and YouTube? We will have results by excellence. We beg, my darlings, by fire, by force. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 29 says, Do you see a man skillful and experienced in his work? Do you see a man that is skillful and experienced in his work? He will stand in honor before kings. That man will stand in honor before kings. That man will stand in honor before kings. He will not stand before obscure men. So the Bible helps us to understand that there is an obscurity that can close doors for you. But there is something that can open doors for you. And that is what we call excellence. And by excellence, you will have results. And you will have results by force. So my objective this morning is that we will understand. We will understand what it profits to function in excellence. What is excellence all about? Excellence is about being the very best that you can be. Excellence is about doing the very best that you can do in every facet of your life. Ask yourself anytime you are doing anything, anytime you are engaged in any project, is this the best I can do? Can you take your neighbor and ask them, is this the best that you can do? Is this the best that I can do? Is this the best that I can do? For whatever journey you find yourself or the juncture that you find yourself in life, and maybe you're not satisfied with that result, I want you to ask yourself, is this the best that I can do? Hallelujah. Excellence is not only about the best that you can do, but excellence is, by, is about also taking those gifts that God has given you. Excellence is also taking those potentials that God has given you. Excellence is about taking the abilities that you have to the highest possible level. You, res you, you refuse to stop midway in performing anything. You refuse to stop midway in terms of how good you can be. So if I can put it another way, excellence is peak potential performance, triple P. Peak performance potentials, or performance rather. When you are experiencing peak using your potential and performing or in reverse performing your potentials at its peak excellence number three is about doing what your hands find to do with all your might anytime that the devil thinks he has locked you in he has boxed you in you go deeper and say, what can I do with these hands that God has given me? What can I do with these hands of mine? What can I find to do that I can turn around for my prosperity? Ecclesiastes chapter 9 verse 10, he says, whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. All the power that you can amass from Whatever your hands can do, do it with all your might. For there is no activity or there is no planning or knowledge or wisdom in Sheol, 
neither the world or the place of the dead where you are going hallelujah that you cannot turn things around so whenever you feel like I'm stuck I don't have I don't have the resources look at your hands somebody pray over your hands and say Lord bless the works of my hands excellence has to do with you deciding that I'm not going to withhold anything back excellence has to do with you saying I'm going to do that which is profitable and I'm going to enhance myself and I'm going to enhance the value of my hands so what is the profitability of excellence pastor fortune that you want to talk about whenever you engage yourself in excellence there has to be profit or in another way put there has to be results Excellence brings opportunity. When people around you begin to see the works of your hands being diligently portrayed or when they start seeing excellence, it starts opening up new and more opportunities for you, Stephen. That is why the Bible says in 22 verse 29 of the book of Proverbs, do you see a man who is highly skillful in his work and experienced in his work? He will stand in honor before kings. People who are business people understand this concept very well because any time that they perform their business perfectly, there's another opportunity that opens. Joseph, may the Lord bless the works of your hands. You will stand before kings, I prophesy over you, PBP, and everybody under the sound of my voice. Doors of opportunity will open up for you in Jesus' mighty name. You will not stand before obscure men and women that will waste your time. May doors of opportunity flung open for you. May they fling open for you so that people can experience the depth of you. Proverbs 18, 16 says, a man's gift, a man's gift given in love or courtesy makes room for him and brings him before great men. Your gift will make room for you. Anytime you feel rejection, your room will make room for you. Uh, sorry, your gift rather will make room for you. Genesis 41, 40, 14 says, then Pharaoh sent and called for Joseph and they hurriedly brought him out of the dungeon. And when Joseph shaved himself and changed his clothes, making himself presentable, he became to Pharaoh. So there was an opportunity for Joseph to change his garments of prison into garments of royalty so that he can associate and begin to speak with royalty so that he can begin to dine with royalty. May you experience the same unction. May the same anointing come upon you that will allow you to take off your garments of captivity. Take off your garments of poverty so that you can also wine and dine with kings. It is your time, it is your season to open up garments of royalty. Moderators, I need you to be vigilant today. Because I can see the devil is daring me. I'm going to come out guns blazing with the Holy Spirit. So the Pharaoh had to experience Joseph in a different garment. And my prayer for you, that as you leave here today, you will walk boldly. You will walk with your head held up high. If they have to say, why is your nose up in the air? Let them say your nose is up in the air. But you know what you carry. Doors of opportunity will open for you. Garments of royalty are being dished out this morning. In the book of First Samuel chapter 16, Saul told his servants, find me a man who plays well. Bring him to me. I don't want just an ordinary musician. I don't want just anybody who doesn't take their craft seriously. Find me a man who plays well. 
Bring him to me. And one of the young men said, Behold, I have seen a son of Jesse the Bethlehemite who is a skillful musician. They didn't say the son of Jesse was just a musician, but a skillful musician. There's something that sets you apart from the other person. What makes people choose to go look for a specialist physician? Even when they look for physicians, there's a time that people are not looking for general practitioners, but they're looking for skillful doctors or even if you are a general practitioner there's something that sets you apart to become that skillful general practitioner who is so skilled that they look like a specialist they perform like a specialist because they are wearing a different garment they treat people differently they have courtesy they have that skill that sets them apart from the general I think in the past I've taught something like this to say, even if you are to have the same qualification and degree with other people, what will set you apart when you get to that interview is the extra. And what is that extra? Because there's always more. There is an extra. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, there is an extra. He says, seek for me a skillful musician. Oh, Rabashikota Mande de Debesha. A garment must change. Royalty must be seen. I need a skillful musician, and somebody had to, re to recommend and be that reference point. Shando Dabahasa Takadia. That reference point in the name of Jesus Christ. A brave and a competent man. Hallelujah. And as they recommended this man and they said there is a skillful musician, a brave and a competent man, a warrior. A warrior. Not only is he a skillful musician, but he's also a warrior. He's a person who has discernment. He is not only does he have discernment, but he is prudent. He's eloquent in speech. A handsome man. And the Lord is with him. Look at the description that was given about this guy. In the book of Samuel. They are describing David. Not only is he a skillful musician. Look at the extra that is being told. He's brave. Not only is he brave, but he's competent. Can people say about that about you? Can your generation refer you? When we ask for references, what are we asking for? They said this man is not only a skillful musician, but he is also a warrior. Eloquent in speech. Prudent. And he's also handsome. You know what I love about this description? They didn't just say he's a cute person. He's not just handsome. They didn't say, Oh, Rabba Shikota Bahasa Takadiaba. Thank you, Jesus. They didn't just say David is just handsome. They started. Thank you, Jesus. Just hold on a second. They didn't just say he was handsome, but they noticed his qualities. There was a CV that preceded. There's a CV that preceded this, this man that they were talking about. So Saul sent messengers to Jesse and said, send me David, your son who is with the flock. Send me David, your son who is with the flock. Oh, royal garment, take charge. I need a royal garment on me. Hallelujah. I appeal again, moderators, kindly do your work for me, please, in the background. It makes it destructive, dis disruptive when I have to multitask and do so many things at the same time. God bless you, Pastor Victor. Thank you for coming. Then we track the scriptures and we get to the book of Daniel chapter 5 verse 11 to 13. The Bible says, there is a man in your kingdom in whom a spirit of the holy gods and in the days of your father, illumination and understanding and wisdom like the wisdom of the gods were found in him. 
Who is this man that we're talking about? And the Bible says, And the king Nebuchadnezzar, your father, your father the king, appointed this man as chief of the magicians and enchanters, Chaldeans and the diviners. It was because an extraordinary spirit... It was because of the knowledge of this man. It was because of the insight that this man carried. It was because of the ability that this man had to interpret dreams. It was because of the ability of this man to be able to clarify riddles. It was because of the ability of this man to solve complex problems were found in this man. This man was a solution giver. This man was a man that gave solutions. And that man was called Daniel whom the king named Belteshazzar. Now let Daniel be called and he will give the interpretation. I'm appealing to you this morning that PBP members and those who are coming for the first time who are finding themselves on this broadcast and you don't know how you landed here. It is because... It is time for you to step on the stage. It is time for you to take on the platform that will release supernatural dimensions for you to operate. And it is time for your royal garments to be put on. It is time for your solution garments to be put on. It is time for people to call on you for the solutions to their issues and their problems. So as you track through the scriptures, you find out that without doubt... You track and you see that there is excellence that was found in certain individuals. And scripture shows us examples of opportunity that presented itself by excellence. And I tracked the scriptures and I found a man called Joseph, the gift of excellence positioned Joseph and gave him an opportunity of standing before Pharaoh and offering a generational solution to Egypt. Joseph went from prison to the palace by the virtues of excellence. Talk to me. Who is ready to step up and step out? When I track through the scriptures, I've just illustrated you via scripture that a man called David who became a king, the gift of excellence opened the doors of opportunity for royalty for him to get to a position where he ministered to another king, King Saul, and he began to open up the door of opportunity so that he can step in and take his position. Some of you, you will have to minister to people who are on your seat. And when you minister to the people on that seat, they have no, there is no way that they don't know that you are about to take over. So there are things that spirituality can do for you that the things are showing themselves to be things of quality. There is something about quality that unleashes doors of opportunity. Things that quality will do for you yes i acknowledge but there's also things that spiritually can be done so when spirit breathes on quality you begin to understand that things open that is why child of god there are some people who will ask themselves and say but pastor i'm also a born again christian why is my business not doing better let us consider for a second this example where you have three Christians doing the same thing and they are next to each other. Why is it? Is it if it was just by virtue of being born again that we are saying we are all owning restaurants and automatically you expect God to prosper your restaurant. You expect God to prosper. I expect God to prosper my restaurant as well. It is not a hard ask from God. But there is something that I call quality that will set you apart. When quality begins to have intercourse with the anointing, it releases a door of opportunity. It releases results that you are looking for. Child of God, it was not fasting that took David to the palace. It was excellence. Did you get me? Did you grab that? I said it was not fasting that took David to the palace it was excellence oh track with me Bible scholars before you accuse me of blaspheming or, or, or teaching a wrong doctrine do you see it it was 
quality. It was excellence that elevated David. We cannot disregard that at the place of promotion lies a key. That key to that door is excellence. It was the key, the gift of excellence that unlocked Daniel and gave him the opportunity to minister to before all the kings that lived in his time. There is something that makes that company be called back again and again and again. And as much as you can sit by the sidelines and be complaining and keep on saying, why is it that this company keeps on getting the same opportunity? Sweetheart, it's not always that it's nepotism. It's not always that it's because they are bribing or something. No, it could be just virtually excellence that keeps on asking them for repeat business because when you are excellent, they keep calling you back. Daniel became notorious for good by virtue of the display of his excellence. There are doors that will open naturally because you excel. Excellence will bring opportunity, to, uh, but what you do with the opportunity when it is brought to you will determine your impact in life. What you do with that opportunity will determine your impact in life. Opportunity is to be used to offer generational answers. Opportunity is to be used to offer generational solutions. Opportunity is to be used to saturate your world with kingdom principles. Opportunities shall be used and is to be used to bring glory to God. Anytime an opportunity is presented to you, don't waste that opportunity because kingdom of God is waiting for you to do something productive with that opportunity so that there can be an elevation and an expansion in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. An opportunity when it's presented to you, it is to be used to bring many unto the salvation of Christ. When people look at you and they see the excellence operating inside of you, they must want to, to associate with you. Nobody wants to associate with the loser. People want to associate with excellence. Thank you, Jesus. So when you excel, people want to listen to you. When you excel, people, when they listen to you, you can tell them about this Jesus that has called you to this marvelous light. You can begin to share with them the matters of life and matters of the kingdom. Uh, that there will be a lot of people that want to hear you. A lot of people that want to be influenced by you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So what am I saying? I'm saying there's profitability in excellence. Number two, excellence will bring you into authority. Excellence attracts authority. The way of excellence is the way to the top. If you want to get to the top, you, are, you adopt excellence. The way of excellence is the way of leadership. When you start taking leadership and you do not become timid, Excellence begins to elevate you to want more, to overtake, and to get to the point of what? Leadership. You check the scriptures with me this morning, you also see that there are examples of people that operated in this authority. Excellence was what took Joseph to the point where he was in the highest position of power and authority in Egypt, Genesis chapter 41. Quality deletes obscurity in your life. Anytime you present quality to people, obscurity is a no-no. Obscurity becomes a non-entity. Obscurity parts disappear. You can never die in obscurity for as long as you are given to quality delivery. Oh my God, I seize the opportunities presented to me. I will always display quality in everything that I do. Somebody open up your mouth and pray. Even in my workplace, I will display authority. I will display quality and I will be positioned in positions of authority. Promotion becomes my birthright, but promotion begins to manifest daily because of who I am and the what I do in the way that I do, in the skill that I apply, in the quality that I apply in Jesus' name. Him. Excellence was what positioned David in the highest level of influence in Israel. May the Lord of excellence position you and leadership and, 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 and give you the influence that you require in Jesus' mighty name. Not only will you just be positioned as a leader or promoted even in that workplace, but you will carry influence. They will want to serve you. They will want to submit to you. 
It was excellence that positioned Daniel above all his contemporaries and made him relevant and put him in authority in Babylon. It was excellence. Please make sure we're sharing the broadcast continuously. Hallelujah. It was excellence that positioned him in various fields of human endeavor. Excellence takes people to the top. No matter what field you are in, if you are excellent in that thing, you go to the top. Even in the darkness, even in the people of the world, they understand that the more you, if you are going to sin, be a good sinner so that you can benefit from those fru the fruits of sin. So if they can do it in the kingdom of darkness, what more us who are bringing light? Hallelujah. Excellence will delete prejudice. They can't prejudge you. Excellence deletes prejudice. What to do with that authority? Authority, when it's given to you, God giving you authority because of the excellence that you have displayed. Author, authority is to be used positively. What are you going to use it for? You're going to influence systems. You're going to influence institutions that you are placed in. You are going to influence people positively. You're going to use your authority in, the, in all spheres that you are positioned, whether you're a supervisor, top down, down up, you are using your influence. When you use your authority positively, you don't die. You live above. You don't die under. Mm -mm. You live above. Authority is to be used positively to impact people in authority. Now your CEO starts to notice you. Now the people who are above, who are managing you, start noticing you and say, this is a person we can entrust with this business. Poverty is a limitation of impact. Let me say that again. Poverty is a limitation of impact. If you are not going to be successful because of, of, your, of you not wanting to give yourself to excellence, you are doing us a disservice because Christ operated in excellence. So you must take excellence as your Christian duty. It is your Christian duty to be in charge. It is your Christian duty to be successful. It is your Christian duty to be on top all the time. You are duty bound to be on top under God is to be on top. Anytime you say I'm covered by God, I'm covered by God, I'm covered by God. It means you're on top. So you must take it as your Christian responsibility to be in a position of authority. Don't shy away from positions of authority. Authority is to be used positively, as I've been saying, to impact the masses. The masses are impacted. Don't shy away. Don't shy away in participating in politics. Because if all politicians don't even have an ounce of Christianity, how can the world ever hope to change? Maybe you're serving a politician. Maybe you are in a position where you can influence decisions. Use it positively. So excellence brings prosperity. Excellence brings abundance. Excellence, br whenever you are employing quality, quality attracts quantity. Now the masses begin to come through. Quality. Excellence was the same thing that gave Joseph control over the wealth of Egypt. He was not just given a position without substance. He had control over the wealth of Egypt. Some of you are praying for financial increase even in your workplaces. Some of you are praying for more profits in your businesses. It is excellence that will give access to that wealth. Excellence brought Daniel into unbelievable wealth and abundance. It opened up doors. Can you imagine by the time when you are, you are advising kings, you can't suffer like at that level, no. Excellence brought Daniel to an unbelievable, unbelievable level of wealth and abundance. Excellence brought David into an unbelievable wealth and abundance. Do you see a trait? I've just given you three examples, but I'm showing you a pattern that none of these three men suffered financially. So there is a direct correlation between finance and carrying out your assignment in an excellent way. Your quality of work is undeniably going to make people notice you. Excellence brought Solomon into the realms of unquantifiable wealth. Nobody could even count the wealth of Solomon. 
Nobody could count the abundance of Solomon. So there are benefits that come from excellence. Prosperity is designed in such a way to, 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 to be those who, who know what to do with money in the kingdom of God is where God places it because they know what to do with it. In our mentorship class yesterday, we learned something that, you know, things may be going well and suddenly you are hit. So you need to understand why the enemy does certain things. You need to understand why the enemy tries to block you with certain things. Because he understands what you're carrying that you are actually the one who's got the keys to unlock your the destiny of your family. Understand why the fight is coming your way. Am I communicating? Because the enemy can see your prosperity most times before you can see it. He can see the breakthrough before you can see it. Yesterday, we suffered three strikes on this TikTok. This morning, we woke up, our accounts were blocked. Do you think it is just the enemy just chilling and, 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 and they're happy? Our statistics were affected. Look at the numbers. Because why? The notification did not go out. People did not receive the notice. That's why I'm saying, rather you send an email, be part of our WhatsApp group so that you can know where we are broadcasting this. This gospel shall be preached. So all those trollers that I was even dealing with at the beginning of the broadcast, you've got nothing. I will preach this thing. I will keep on resurrecting in one way or the other. Am I communicating, saints? The fight that the enemy sends my way gives me a signal I'm onto something. Enemies are monitoring me. I'm even I'm, I'm like, okay, God, that means I'm onto something. There's something I'm doing right. If enemies are, are onto me like that, there must be something I'm doing right. Joshua. And one thing, I, I've, I've said this before. Ayaba. Uh, Mom Anna, you need to understand this. <laughs> the worst thing you could do to me is to provoke me. When you try and shut me down, that's the more the time you say I must speak up. Do you know what I do with people that try to... Anytime I notice in my path that somebody is trying to stab me in the back, you're actually propelling me to do more. It was better that you did not show me that I'm hated. The more the haters, the more I, I, I elevate you. I'm asking me to scream even more. I will find ways. I will find ways to come on. I will find this gospel. I will preach it. All the ends of the earth. No maganjain. I will preach it. I'm not shaken. So you see your finances being attacked. Ask yourself. Why would the enemy come to you? Because by your standard, you are checking yourself and you're saying, I only earn 10,000. Why is the enemy attacking me like I earn 100,000? Sweetie, because he can see you have the potential of that 100K. So, oh, Rabba, Kadia, Bashende. Be inspired, I'm telling you. I think you saw at the start of the, I was holding my head and I was watching what was happening on the screen. Some of you were not seeing what was happening. And I was like, devil, I have no time. Not today. Not today, devil. Not today again. You tried us last night. Not today. Josh, I'm international, sweetheart. Give me any language. I'll speak it. Not today. This gospel, I will pre preach it, Marie. It was better that you keep quiet. You know, sometimes if you wake up somebody... It was supposed to be just a smooth terrain. And now you're asking me to do more. Try and stab me in the back. You're asking me to do more. So prosperity. Why does, why does God bring prosperity? Why would you profit from your excellence? Because he wants us to spread this gospel. That's why God does not have a problem. People who are stingy. It takes a while for money to come into their hands. And when they, it comes into their hands, they don't even know what they've done with it because it just disintegrates. Yes, be inspired. Tithing is equally important. 
You see what, what, what be inspired is saying? Tithing is key as a child of God. God cannot afford for me to be messed around with. Why would God not want to position and put money in my hands? Because it, God knows what I will do with money. That's why the enemy fights. The enemy fights those he knows that these ones will expand the kingdom. Oh my dear, trust me. I will expand and change the four corners of the world. You'll wonder why that, that girl from South Africa in Pretoria, how is it possible? Guys, it's not by might, it's not by power, it's by the spirit of the living God. I don't mean to be braggadocious, but when I'm given the opportunity, I make sure I deliver. I deliver fully and I don't hold back. I don't come half-hearted when I come on this broadcast. I come with everything inside of me. I come with everything inside of me. Make no mistake, I pour out. I've been awake since 3 a.m. I never take for granted that the Lord will just show. I, I pour, I say, God, pour into me so that I can go pour out. I'm diligent in my preparation. I'm diligent in my preparation. Mara official, I hope we're tracking together. So prosperity is designed so that there can be a spreading of the gospel. God is giving you the action and the provision so that the devil can receive frustration. My job is to frustrate the devil at all costs. So if you want to be relevant in the end time gospel, you must have financial power and muscle. And I will have it. I will have it. I'm not there yet. I'm still going. I will have the relevant financial power and muscle. I will change worlds. I will change people's lives. I will feed homes. I will feed families. And I'm not doing it alone. God did not bring us together. It's not an accident. Make no mistake about it. Prosperity is given to those for the purpose of, 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 of generational impact by good works. And the church, the body of Christ, should be at the forefront of good works. Why is it be, must it be non-governmental organizations that are, are owned by people of, of the kingdom of darkness that are making change? We will make this change. Together, me and you, PBP, watch, we've not started. Watch, I'm still coming for you. I'm still coming for you. Riches without outreach is just wretchedness. Our riches must be able to enable us to reach out and do, do outreaches. To go where the gospel of God is not preached, the gospel of Jesus is not preached. We will reach there, PPP. We will reach there. If we have to have our own network, we'll have our own network. We'll have... You see, sometimes people would say, but why are these churches so focused on studying TV channels? It's because we are tired of embargoes. We are tired of being shushed. Nobody wants us to talk. Simple class yesterday, we were explaining one simple thing. And people were being liberated. And suddenly, enemy came out. Devil is a liar. We're back here again. And if you cannot find me for any reason on this TikTok or anywhere else, you go and report and tell them, bring back Fortune Online, bring back that account by fire by force. So prosperity is designed for generational impact. Prosperity is to be used to reach out to the poor. Prosperity is to be used to reach out to the underprivileged. This is the assignment God has given us, Genesis 12-2. God wants us to be a distributor of wealth. God wants us to be a distributor, not just accumulators. There are people who are in poverty who are waiting for us to step up and step out. Hey, 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 hey. I want to only just work for my family. The devil is a liar. Who, what, which family only? When you've got a broader BBP family, there's a break up family here. We are waiting for you. When you come to the point where there is nothing too big to surrender to God, he will put things in your hands that will amaze you. When you come to a point where you stop being so stingy, when you understand the reason why you are sowing seeds and you are paying your tithe. Is it because we don't ask for money? Ask those who sow seeds, they will tell you what they've unlocked. 
this money is put in your hand so that it can do an expansion on other people. If you've never sown a seed in your life that has changed somebody's life, icon, check yourself. Put God first. Put the impact of the kingdom first. Put making meaning first. And God will put massive resources in your hands that will shock you. The reason why God, sometimes it's not the devil blocking your finances. God is slowing you down because you can see selfishness galore. There's selfishness galore. Pursue God passionately and what others are pursuing will begin to pursue you. Money must pursue you. Become a kingdom financier, Sabine. When we speak that gospel, nobody wants to hear it. Become a king. Become, I think much should be a month of sacrifice. Where we speak and we put our money where our mouth is. Mary, my darling, I will speak about this God passionately. Money will pursue me. I've lived this thing. I've practiced this thing personally. I saw that in the seasons of my life where it was dry season and I chose to compromise my finances and say, God, I don't have enough. But when things turned around and I poured everything that was literally, I said everything that I have, I can clearly see that I'm frustrating myself. This is, this is all you, God. It started pursuing me again. This was my destiny. This was, it's just that sometimes I never want to make examples of material things. When I started working, I never struggled for any material good thing. If you ask those that knew me, when I started working, things came with ease. You know where my focus was? Totally focused on the kingdom. When I now started now thinking this nonsense of I'm balancing, balancing. No, 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 no. It's not all about God. No. I started seeing shift. But I had to quickly align myself. And I now started seeing that the thing that had a voice that I was pursuing was starting to pursue me again. I pray for you, PBP, that people will start pursuing you. Money will start pursuing you. The finances that you have been chasing. Yes. Yes, Takazani. Finance attention. Money goes where God wants it to work. Father, thank you for your word to us today. To you be all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I pray for every single person under the sound of my voice. Let the spirit of delay, let the spirit of depression, let the spirit of discouragement seize its immediate attack right now in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for your focus. The Lord is taking you back to where you belong. The Lord is taking you back where you belong so that the enemy can no longer bring you down. I pray for you, PBP, and everybody under the sound of my voice that every door that is closed against you will open right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Everything that has followed you all these years that has been causing frustration and causing you not to operate in excellence that thing returns back to hell now in Jesus mighty name anything that has affected your progress anything that has affected your motion till this point it is arrested now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ I decree and I declare that you are moving forward everything that has failed in your life the Lord shall repair and the Lord shall correct I pray that your creative miracle that you are trusting God for shall be experienced speedily in this first quarter of this year in Jesus' mighty name. Everything that you are trusting God for, you shall receive in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I pray that the verdict of the enemy shall be cancelled right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. The verdict that the enemy thought will frustrate you and bring a full stop to your progress. It is cancelled right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What belongs to you belongs to you. What belongs to your family belongs to your family. And in any way that the devil has held that thing back right now, I command a release. 
I command a release to your possessions right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. What is yours that enemy has been delaying? I declare that that delay is over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I declare that delay is over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I speak to the grave that is closed. I speak to the grave that they dug up for you. I speak to that pit to release you, to vomit you out in the name of Jesus Christ. The grave that they sought to put you in is closed. I speak to you, PPP, and I declare prophetically that you shall not die before your time. Whatever spare part you need, God is fixing it right now. The God of all spare parts that they said you need this, you need that, you can't have this, is fixing that part of your body right now. Whatever body part that seems to be not in alignment with the rest of the body, right now, the Lord is restoring Whatever the devil sought to destroy in you, whether by cancer, by HIV, by whatever illness, in Jesus' mighty name, it is fixed right now. Everything that the devil has locked in your life, I command that it shall be unlocked in Jesus' mighty name. Please, may I have power on Mara Official in Jesus' mighty name. God is going to use the excellence of your hands to ensure that what people look for will look for you. What others are contending and looking for shall look for you in Jesus' mighty name. God is going to use the excellence of your hands to ensure that he elevates you in Jesus' mighty name. Every embargo, every embargo placed in your life Every embargo placed in your family in the name of Jesus Christ. Every embargo placed in your resources, it is lifted right now in Jesus' mighty name. You can connect it here, please. It is lifted right now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Somebody open up your mouth right now and decree and declare, I live a life of excellence. I live a light of excellence. I live a light of excellence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. There are three critical decisions for excellence. To arrive at excellence, you must decide to give your best in your relationship with your God. Jesus, or the, the, the word of God says in Acts chapter 20, verse 20, and how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, says the apostle, but I have showed you and I have taught you publicly and from the house to house, from house to house, I taught you publicly and I showed you I kept back nothing. So you must be also at the position where you say, Lord, I keep nothing from you. To arrive at the place of excellence, you must decide to give out your best in your relationship with God. The right decision on the road to destiny is the, uh, the decision towards excellence. It takes the right decision to arrive at the right destination. And decision becomes the foundation for your distinction. So if you make the right distinction that is aligned with a decision of excellence, then you will be distinctive. Right decisions lead to distinction. As I was saying, there are three critical decisions to be made in order to be relevant and to be excellent and to be outstanding in your life. The decision to give out your best in your life, number one, that is the first thing. So the second thing is the decision against compromise. You must decide not to compromise. You must decide not to be conventional, to be, decide not to be in conformity with the rest of the world. That is why you also, in the book of Romans chapter 12, you are taught, you say you should not conform to the standards of the world. You must not conform. You must not compromise. You must not be conventional. Your existence can never be conventional. This is a decision to be positively different from the other 
others people from how others are doing things it is the decision not to live at the mercy of the crowd it is a decision not to be mediocre in your life it is a decision not to struggle like everyone else but to set yourself apart to work smarter to be distinctive in Jesus mighty name it is a decision to follow the template of Daniel to make the choice to stand when others are sitting to to, to wake up when others are sleeping it is a decision not to be like others with all humbleness and humility take your neighbor and say I'm not being braggadocious I'm still humble but I, I'm different take your neighbor and write on that screen and say I'm different it is a decision to refuse for society to dictate how to live your life it is a decision don't struggle to be buried in the crowd do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is thirdly the decision against mediocrity. It is a decision against an average resistance. God bless you, Sabine. It is a decision against mediocrity to decide to stand out in life. Somebody take your neighbor and put it on that screen. Boldly declare, I will stand out. I'm supposed to stand out. Sorry, I don't blend in with the color that you chose. I stand out. There's something different about me. You must make up your mind not to be mediocre. You must make up your mind that I'm not going to be a beggar. You must make up your mind that I'm not going to be a struggler. You are going to make up your mind that I'm not going to be harassed at the mercy of others. I don't live at the mercy of others in Jesus' mighty name. To arrive at excellence, remember, child of God, you must decide to give out your best in your relationship with God. I'm different. Make the decision to give out your best in your life. Make the decision not to compromise, not to conform, but to stand out, not to be conventional. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the quality of the information that you will ingest will determine the quality of your decisions in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, give me the keys to excellence this morning decision decision in itself is a key to excellence excellence is a choice it is not a gift nobody is gifted to be clean or dirty you must make up your mind when you are deciding today am I going to be clean or dirty am I going to take a shower am I not going to take a shower you must make up your mind to give God the best in all you do Determination is a key. Determination is the second key to an excellence in life. Determination is refusing to give up. Even if things do not appear to be working at that moment, the devil will fight your attempt at excellence, but you must refuse to give up. I refuse to give up in Jesus' name. People who are addicted to mediocrity will not understand you. Because of their mindset, which is mediocre. But a rugged determination. I'm ruggedly determined to be not mediocre. I'm ruggedly determined not to have a mediocre mindset. It takes excellence in life to get to the top. You will need to be disciplined, PBP. To be disciplined means that you are ready to pay the price. You are ready to exert the required energy. There is no rise to the top without a prize. Did you hear what I said? There is no rise without a prize. There are people who like taking shortcuts in this journey of life. You will have to pay the school fees, my darling. And not only physical school fees in a school, but also school fees in the realm of the spirit. You will have to pay school fees for your self-development to become better at the thing that brings the money back home. You will have to improve yourself. 
God can open an opportunity for you. Yes, he qualifies those who are not qualified. Even without that qualification, he can open a door for you to be employed in that organization. But sweetie, it ain't just that God opportunity that is going to keep you there. You're going to have to work on yourself. You're going to have to improve yourself. So that, that is why the Apostle Paul teaches us, he says, study to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved so that when people come and, and speak to you and ask for advice, you are able to give that improved advice. So I've just spoken about a few things now. I spoke about decision. I spoke about determination. I spoke about discipline. There's a need for discipline. Discipline is doing what is required to get what is desired. There's something you desire. Be disciplined. It's not nice to wake up every single morning. Sometimes your body's aching. Sometimes you didn't sleep well, but you're going to have to wake up on time. Sometimes you didn't, you, you know, you're going to have to understand and speak to yourself that the days of you watching movies and watching Nollywood for five, seven hours a day, it has to stop because your brain cells need something else to be injected. Talk to me. Am I talk to, talking to somebody? I hope this is empowering somebody. You need to understand that it takes discipline to walk away from TV. It takes discipline to walk away from things that people are doing every single weekend. You cannot be hanging around with friends every single weekend and be thinking that you're going to have excellence in 2024. Let me tell you the truth. It's good to have friends, but you need to sh step away. And you're not going to attend every single funeral. Mm -mm. There's divide and conquer. There's other family members that will split themselves. You can't. When I did my, my, my life coaching and my business coaching, John Maxwell taught us this. Said, if you decide on an income and say, this is what I want to earn every month. You must now divide those that money and say, how am I going to earn it? How many hours am I going to have to invest in doing what I need to do? It means you're not going to take everybody's phone call. It's impossible. If you've got a target to meet, if you know that by the end of month, this is the target I'm chasing, Caesar. You've got no business being on the phone call with everybody every single time. As much as addictive this platform is, it is very addictive. I, prob I kid you not. Even in traffic, we sit on this platform. But there comes a time when you know what you desire will need discipline. You're going to have to pack certain things. I promise you. There was a time when we were not walking around with these phones. Where you knew you had a landline. You had to get home before you touch that phone. Now all of a sudden... People are expecting you to answer every phone call on WhatsApp. I'm sorry, I don't. Because if I had to, I would be poor. I would be in poverty permanently. It's not that, it's not that I don't want to take the call, but the, the, I divide my time up. I do the best I can. Hello? Am I communicating? So discipline. There's a desire. You want something. How bad do you want it? How bad do you want it? Hello? You, I don't know what it is you desire, but let me drop this so that, and then it's fine if you don't call me a woman of God after this. It's fine. No problem. You cannot. There's a season where you can do fasting and prayer 24 hours as you are building up. But there are certain things, as you know, that you are called. You are not only royalty, but you are, you are a kingly priest. You are also kings. You are to, be, to dominate on this planet Earth. You're going to have to put time aside to dominate the things of the Earth. In this Earth, you're going to have to put time aside. You cannot run a company and just say, my discipline is going to be fasting and prayer 24 hours. Do you still love me? Those who are men and women of God, you, you, are, you are welcome to call me out in the comment section. You are welcome to, to call me out if I'm wrong. I once got into trouble when I was still serving and not running my own church. Oh God, I don't know why I'm going there, but let me illustrate this to you. The instruction, and I follow instruction, I follow protocol. But I had to be wise that I knew that I cannot keep people in church seven days a week. 
every time they just go to work and they come home and expect them to improve themselves. This is controversial. Find me and find me well. Don't lose me because now you just say, I'm not going to show up, Pastor, for Friday morning prayers. You have to show up for morning prayers. What I'm, I'm teaching you is time management. You have to manage the time. And I made a decision at that point. Oh my God. Oh, let's do this again. Oh, TikTok. These verifications. Okay, here we go. I'm teaching you time management. And I made a decision. I said, those who serve under me, the students, I would say that I said, I don't want to see students every single night in church. When do you get time to study? I don't know if I'm wrong. When do you get time to study? If you are, you are in school, you are at church, and then you get home, you are tired. It's 11 o'clock, it's 12 midnight. There must be wisdom that we apply. As men and women of God, sometimes we must not destroy our own ministry. Sometimes, I don't know, maybe it might come back to bite me. I don't know what I'm saying. But understand that to be effective in this journey, where we become giants in the world, we have to attribute our time accordingly. Your body needs rest, yes. Your, your brain needs rest, yes. It also needs God. It also needs you to study, to show yourself approved. Am I going to trust a doctor to operate on my body and that doctor has told me the only thing that I've read is Genesis to Revelation. Sweetie, I trust in the ability and the supernatural ability of God, but you better know the body organs very well before you put that knife in my body. Before you're going to operate on me, tell me you understand the human anatomy very well. Oh, I hope you catch my spirit. Discipline is work. Discipline is work. Understand the assignment. Okay, pastor, what is the time? What are we doing? What are we doing? Organization of your life. You will still show up for rehearsals. You will still show up for all these things. But that means then you have to go back at home and manage your time very well. God comes first without a doubt. Without a doubt. That is why I never overpromise. If I get to it, I get to it. I will do my best. If I, if I didn't get to it, you know that there was other some, something else that was competing that I had to put my heart into as well. The same with taking care of your family. You can't be absent and chasing money alone and think that that is parenting. These kids, these little gremlins that are running around screaming, they need your time and attention. Otherwise, they get out of hand. So where was I disciplined? Diligence. Have we spoken about diligence? Diligence is another one. Diligence means you are paying attention to detail. See as a man who is diligent in his work, he shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mere men. Diligence, paying attention to, to, to detail. Refuse to overlook things. Don't do, do things whop whop as we say it in South Africa. Just JNJ. Anyhow, you just want to say, I've done it. When people sit with your document, with your proposal, like you're wondering, did you take an effort? Did you make an effort? If I'm to open up your curriculum vitae, your CV, did you make an effort or did they tell you just put down your name and CV and, and where you worked and did you take an effort? Did you check your spelling? PBP, excellence, excellence. Did you do a spell check? Did you, if, if you say, Pastor, I've got shortcomings, did you ask somebody to help you look at that document? Some people's dreams are blocked or they don't come to pass over simple, small mistakes. 
you sent in that application for visa did you find out what they require did you attach it in the way they required did you make an effort to check that the photocopy that you did was at least visible imagine being rejected because they say you submitted a document that was not visible don't give an enemy empowerment or a key to refuse you pay attention to detail be a tool of excellence makitaza pay attention to detail your cv is competing with 1000 other cvs on that table what makes your set apart yes we will pray over it make my life easy too if i'm praying make my life easy as you are working in your workplace don't tell me you are in a toxic environment meanwhile your work is not up to scratch meanwhile you are you are just peppering peppering you are in the kitchen it's always you those who are not speaking english please forgive me i will interpret but the holy spirit is interpreting and helping me you can't be yapping 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 all in the kitchen in the corridors your work is not up to scratch and then you will come and say pastor i don't know why they treat me like this at work it is because you should not be engaging in all that chitty chatter those gossips give me diligence to work with give me discipline do you know the best revenge is when you are sitting with your manager and they are doing your performance appraisal and you can when they say one you can say two not when they've got evidence against you and you you can see here yeah, you can't get out and when you have got evidence against you it's better you just apologize and say I'll get my act together I get you I see these are areas of improvement Do you see what I'm I'm saying child of God Let's not go carry ourselves anyhow there and say I'm a Christian nothing will happen to me God is expecting excellence you get what you sow what you sow you reap trust me don't be found with evidence When you can see you know the beauty of the Holy Spirit he nudges you and corrects you Just this past week I wrote an email to somebody. I was in a rush. There were so many things happening in my head. I wrote that email. I walked to the canteen with one of my colleagues and I said I've just sent an email but the way I positioned that email I think I will come across as rude. That's why sometimes when you are angry or when you are in a rush or under pressure, don't click send on certain things. Read the thing and reread again and ask yourself how is it going to come across to the other person? And when you can help it by not writing an email, just pick up the phone call and call. Some things are best done over the call. Because there's nothing you're going to achieve properly that is prob- probably constructive over email because you might end up going back and forth. So when the Holy Spirit nudged me, I said, "You know what? I'm going to retract that email because For the mere fact that the Holy Spirit is making me remember that email that means there's something that is the person is going to read incorrectly. And when I read it to the other person and says yeah you're right now he was going to definitely take it the wrong way. I was not trying to be rude, but because I was in a hurry, I was giving commands and 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 I didn't position myself well. I learned that part of excellence is etiquette and 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 courtesy when you speak to people. amazing things amazing things that can open doors for you simple small things can close doors for you how you communicate how you approach the approach is the issue how you ask things from people oh etiquette is key takatsani i sit in my office there are things that i don't have to go queue for what do you think is because of the relationship that I've built with those people. I'm a smooth operator of note. They people want to help me without queuing. Why? And when I need to queue, I queue. I don't say, "Do you know who I am?" Don't you know who I am? Uh-uh. I have I can show you humility in a level that even you who was trying to 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 crush me you can't crush me because i'm humble i understand people in their positions people in positions of power i don't care whether that person does not have a degree i don't care whether i i i've got a car and they don't have a car 
I will be humble and I will respect every single person I meet on this path of life. I respect even the hobo on the street because I don't know what door is about to be unlocked. That hobo, somebody may have meant harm my way. Somebody may have was about to just rob me. And because of the person that I met on the road that looked like a nobody and I gave them the most absolute respect, that person helped me from that danger. This life is spiritual. This life is about excellence. This life is about how you approach and you treat people. Do you think as I'm queuing and as that person on the other side of the desk is busy not following instructions and, and doing their own personal thing? Do you think I don't want to shout at that person? I do. But there's a way that the Holy Spirit will make me engage that person. They will be ashamed that they were not even giving me attention at that time. Let's continue and close. I see time is fast gone. Shoot, today I'm talking a lot. So refuse to overlook things. Go through your reports very meticulously. Go through everything. Refuse to overlook things, even in the way you are dealing with another human being. Refuse to overlook things. Work on yourself. Don't take things for granted and say, my husband met me like this. My wife met me like this. I'll just, just be like this. No. Improve yourself. Improve their lives. You are there to be a helper. You are there to improve yourself. Don't go to the shops looking like a, you are washing a, a, a laundry at home. Yet you want marital settlement. Make life easier for us when we do these prayer points. Make life easier when I'm praying for you that you made an effort. That your potential spouse finds you and looking yummy. Don't know what yummy means. Don't ask me. Don't do things in a hurry. Let things be properly disposed. Neatness around you. Neatness says a lot about a person. Pick up things that don't have to. If it doesn't have to be here, move it around. Whenever I enter a place and the things are just upside down, it, 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 it upsets me. My daughter says, I understand my mess. Nobody says, I don't understand the mess. It gets me, it gets me confused. Ragged determination to be excellent. Father, thank you. Thank you. And as you engage in excellence, you come onto a platform that will guarantee supernatural manifestation. Daniel was preferred above presidents. Daniel was preferred above princes because he had an excellent spirit in him. The king set him above the whole realm for a reason. Father, we are stepping into a supernatural platform. We are changing platforms. A supernatural manifestation platform is a surface on which a person needs to stand in excellence. Platforms that we are changing to, the platform that God is releasing into you will give you a better view. It will introduce you. It is this platform that I'm pushing you to that will bring an expo extraordinary a, a, a level extraordinary comes onto your condition it is the channel that will allow you to flow in divinity to flow in direction towards your destiny father help me to flow into a platform that will guarantee supernatural manifestation as i engage in excellence in jesus mighty name you are moving into guaranteed manifestations of the supernatural guaranteed platforms of the supernatural when you reach supernatural manifestation you will be operating on a di dimension that is beyond scientific understanding when you operate in the supernatural you are in a superhuman atmosphere that defiles the laws of nature by virtue of excellence when the supernatural opens in your direction, in your path, when the operations of the supernatural operate in your life because of excellence, you now understand that the laws of nature become suspended. The natural laws are broken. Protocols become broken because you push through by excellence in Jesus' mighty name. 
You begin to unleash supernatural events in your path. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Supernatural events are unlocked. You operate in infinity. You operate in a supernatural order of existence and, and, and that, that, that strives beyond a, a realm of visibility and tangibility. You are now at a point of departure from what is normal. You are now departing from a point of the paranormal. You are now operating in a supernatural platform for faith, for faith is fortified inside of you, where the glory of God is made manifest in your mortality. You move from mortality to immortality. There is a manifestation of the supernatural by virtue of your excellence. There is a supernatural in an outflow, an outflow of attention, commanding results, commanding results, an outflow of the supernatural by virtue of excellence. I'm operating in a supernatural realm that produces results and cannot be explained rationally in Jesus' mighty name. Father, this is where PBP is going to. You are going to a supernatural realm of life that is superior to the mind. That is superior to the natural. The supernatural manifestation that does not follow natural processes. You don't have to go to one, two, three. You can go to one to ten. You are moving into a dimension of the supernatural reality that does not correspond with the contemporary. Am I talking to somebody this morning? I'm already praying for you. Make sure you shout a loud amen. You are moving to a platform of guaranteed supernatural manifestation by virtue of excellence in Jesus' mighty name. The platform of your assignment that God is going to position for you to, com to, to communicate solutions on. You will solve for others what God puts you in charge over. Take over is your portion. You will take over you will take over in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. You will become relevant. Your relevance is a function of your assignment. Become relevant by excellence. Your functionality will sponsor supernatural manifestations in your path in the name of Jesus Christ. Any time that you will exist without any assignment, assignment, you understand that Satan will give you an assignment. So make sure you are operating in the godly assignment before the Satan substitutes that assignment with his own assignment. Oh, PBP, you cannot be neutral. You are either for God or for the other side. PBP, it is either you are dominating something or something is dominating you. I'm asking you the question this morning. What is dominating you? Your true value is in your assignment. What is your assignment? Know that assignment and do it excellently in Jesus' mighty name. Your true value is in your assignment. And to improve your assignment is to increase your capacity for the supernatural manifestation. And how do you do that? You do that by excellence. The Lord is saying, I'm changing platforms of understanding for people this morning. Platforms of understanding are shifting. Nothing makes you to take over in life like an understanding heart. Give me wisdom. Give me understanding, oh God. Understanding was the platform that elevated Solomon. And, and Solomon took over the whole world in his time because of understanding. My father, give me understanding in Jesus' mighty name. Understanding is the parameter that will guarantee outstanding exploits like Daniel. Father, give me understanding. Is somebody praying for understanding this morning? Father, give me understanding that will shift parameters and guarantee me outstanding exploits in the name of Jesus Christ. Learn from the eagle while other birds are running to take cover when there is a storm. The eagle soars in the midst of the storm. Father, I will soar in the midst of every storm. Let the storms of life when they come cause you to light up and to go up so even better it is when the storm is fierce that the eagle showcases its brevity and its expertise show up with your expertise when they say things are going down and you say i'm going up i can never go down 
Go up when the people are saying they are going down. Swim to the shore when others are saying I'm sinking. You can never sink in Jesus' name. You will not sink in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you, PBP, this morning. You are moving into a dimension of extraordinary excellence in Jesus' mighty name. God, use my past as your raw material to manufacture my glorious future in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, let your past, let my past, oh God, be rejuvenized in Jesus' mighty name. Father, turn the insults of the past to my results today in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Any power that has manipulated your past to giving you insults, right now it dries up in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, thank you. Somebody say, I pray for extraordinary results. I receive extraordinary results. I receive extraordinary results. I receive extraordinary results. I have an excellent spirit. I have an excellent spirit. I have an excellent spirit. Just like Daniel, a person of an excellent spirit, I receive unwavering integrity. I work with diligence. I'm a hard worker. I'm always giving the best in every task that I have. Not out of compulsion, but a genuine desire to excel. I have a consistent prayer life. I have a deep and constant connection with God. I seek his face diligently every single day of my life. In all situations, I understand and I walk in the strength of God. I, work, I walk in the wisdom of God and I excel. Father, give me wisdom and understanding that I have the depth of insight. I can perceive solutions when people don't see it in Jesus' name. I have an excellent spirit that propels me into positions of leadership in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I have an excellent spirit that makes my faith to become unyielding in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. No matter the challenges, no matter the opposition, my faith in God remains intact and it continues to grow in Jesus' mighty name. No matter the opposition, your faith shall remain intact. You will continue to elevate. No matter the opposition, you will remain unshakable in Jesus' mighty name. No matter the opposition, you will continue Continue to draw strength and trust in the Lord your God. I pray for you, PBP, that you will continue to exhibit the love of God. You will continue to, to, to seek the goodness of God. You will continue to seek the goodness of God and seek the goodness in other people. Because you will operate in compassion and you will operate in kindness in Jesus' mighty name. I pray for you, PBP. That you will continue to hunger for knowledge. Always seeking to learn. Always seeking to grow. Always seeking to grow in understanding in this journey. As excellence will require you to do. I pray for you that you will continue to seek continuous development in everything that you do. That you will receive also peace in the midst of every single storm. Even in turbulent times. You will remain calm. You will draw from the peace of God. You will draw from the relationship that you have with God. I pray for you, PPP, and everybody under the sound of my voice, that you will operate in positive influence in all times in Jesus' mighty name. And you will always bring positive change to other people in your life in Jesus' mighty name. You will influence your environment positively in Jesus' mighty name. Receive an excellent spirit. Receive an excellent spirit. Father, thank you for this grace to excel in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that our weaknesses become strengthened in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, for anointing us with the spirit of excellence. Thank you, Lord, for granting us peace to separate us from whatever may defile us. Thank you, Lord, for giving us grace from separating from whatever else might want to defeat us. Thank you, Lord. 
for distinguishing us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that as we close, the spirit of excellence becomes endued in us, becomes part of our DNA in Jesus' mighty name. We raise the sword of the spirit against every barrier of our breakthroughs in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord. We are breaking through every single limitation in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Lord, thank you for the grace to stick to the vision that you have given us in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Lord, that my accusers, those who have been insulting us, the accusers will be put in the pit that they dug up for us in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. The stage is set. The stage is set for excellent manifestation in Jesus' mighty name. Now begin to open up your mouth and thank the Lord your God right now in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you so much for those of us who joined on YouTube, those who joined on Facebook as well. May the Lord grant you peace. May the Lord shine his face upon you. May the Lord charge you up for the rest of this beautiful Sunday. Have a beautiful Sunday. I see you tomorrow, 5 a.m. No Maranjan. Please make sure that you do send an email to us if you are not on the WhatsApp group. And we will send you a link so that you can know what you don't know or you need to know it so that we can actually notify you when we are going live. Um, we try as much as possible, but we want you to set your clock Click that subscribe button. Click that follow button on TikTok and click that, um, what do you call it? Um, click that follow button for me, please, my darlings. Click the follow button for me and make sure that you click that notification bell and make sure you click all notifications so that you can see when I come live. Thank God we don't have those issues on YouTube and thank those we don't have those issues on Facebook. But please make sure that you are following me. Send me an email. Let's stay connected um, so that we don't lose each other. Amen. I bless you. I hope